Hello engineers, welcome to JAL Consult. As you know, this channel is all about building services engineering. For this video, I will be taking you through electrical load schedule. As already explained, load estimates can be of two stages. The preliminary stage by using the square footage method and the load scheduling method where every load ratings are to be computed accurately using a table. A load schedule must be able to explain two things. The first is the reference panel, which is the panel we are designing and can be a sub panel or the main panel. And the second is the feeder which can also be a panel or a service main. To achieve this, a proper load schedule must comprise of two things. The first is the header, and the second is the scheduled table. Although their composition is based on personal preference, but they must be able to express the panel protective device, the cable size, and the diversity factor. Let's take a tour with the practical process. Basically, the load schedule are being computed automatically in all these 3D software such as Revit DDS. But for AutoCAD users, will be using Microsoft Excel because of its mathematical simplicity. After I've launched my Microsoft Excel, as explained, the first section is our header. And for the header, although it's based on personal preference, but it must comprise of the reference panel to this. For this, our computation, let's name it distribution board A, enter. The second thing is the location of the reference panel. Let's assume this our project is a residential project. Let's, pl let's place it at the corridor. The third thing is the feeder, or you can call it the incoma or you call it the source. Let's assume, since we've named this to be a distribution board, which is a sub-panel, so let's name this one to be our main distribution board or main distribution panel. And the last thing is the protective device, which is among the aims of this our computation. We will not be able to specify it until we are done with the computation. So I'm copying all this control c and i'm pasting it here control v so the first thing here is to explain our feeder so we'll be having feeder panel or you can just name it feeder and we've named it to be the main distribution board we have to specify its own location let's assume it to be at the back corner and for this our feeder description we are, we are not specifying for the incoma again so i'm deleting it but ctrl c ctrl x ctrl v so the if own protective device we have to specify it too now let's proceed to the load schedule table the first column we'll be having for our schedule table is the slot number or you can call it the serial number or you call it the circuit number so let's code it to be s slash n slot number and for electrical distribution panels they are being grouped in three phases which implies a single way panel will have three phase or three slots 
Why a double way or a two way panel we have six, three way we have nine, and four way we have twelve. So let's assume for this our computation we are using a four way distribution panels, which implies we'll be having twelve slots. Our second column will be the circuit code. I always emphasize that electrical engineers works with code. So we'll be having circuit code. If you've been following this channel, I explained that circuits are being coded based on our distribution board. So since we've assumed our distribution panel to be distribution board A, our circuit code will goes in A format to so we have A1, A2, A3. The third column is to specify the protective devices. And based on NEC, the only protective devices recommended for our distribution panel is the circuit breakers, which can be a MCB or MCCB. And since we are designing for just a distribution panel, which is a sub panel, we'll be having MCB here. So MCB, which is then rated in Ampere. The third, the fourth column rather is the cable size. We have to specify the cable sizes, which will be using the SI unit standard. So I'm wrapping text now for millimeter square insert. Symbol square insert. Close. Millimeter square. The next column will be our load per point. Load per point is the standard nominal voltage for each circuit. Load per point. And the next column is to specify the number of points in a circuit. Number of points, which is the number of connected equipment or appliances. The next column is to specify the diversity factor. Diversity factor is an electrical assumption which expresses that not all our points connected to a circuit will be energized at the same time. For example, I'm having a bedroom lighting fittings connected to my room fittings. Most ovens, I will require to off my bedroom fittings when I'm not in the bedroom and be using my room fittings. And the next column is to specify our phase. And we'll be using three phase system for this our project. So I'm having my phase here, phase. So I can ins just insert a column here. yellow and blue you can also add the circuit description for simplicity so the next stage is to create our border all borders or you can delete this, or you can delete this. No, no border. So you can, you still come back. Bottom, border, and
here is how we can also adjust it everything here center this is how an electrical load schedule schematics looks like in the part two section of this video we use a project as a case study to design this load schedule see you